Hi everyone, and welcome back to Having Fun Repairs. This is Sean and Kids, and we're doing a bit of a STEM project today. Uh, what's the magic word? Tension. Tension. And this is going to make sense more in a second, but uh, to provide a brief definition of tension, it's kind of like a pulling force uh, developed through by means of string, a cable, a chain, or similar objects. Um, and tension is going to be very important in what we're building today. Directions to build our own... Uh, <laughs> it's going to come into play. Uh, conveyor belt, and we pulled this off of uh, tryengineer.org. A uh, very good list of instructions. Um, and then, uh, off of yellstools.com, we put up a little diagram uh, so we can use it as the premise uh, for how we'll uh, potentially build our conveyor belt. But the reason why tension is important when it comes to um, certain things we see on here, such as our pulleys, is uh, the tension of a pulley over is important in order to keep the belt of our conveyor belt, belt taut. Now, I think if we, we're gonna use a take-up pulley to create tension on this on our design. Tension! But here's what I think. I think if this uh, take-up pulley does not create enough tension on our belt, then the belt is not gonna be able to move. It will just fit loosely and it will not move uh, with our conveyor belt that we build. Now, conversely, if the if the tension Daddy, is too great, Daddy, yeah. Um, this, does this go through and on the bottom and keep going around? Yeah, it should once we're done with it. Okay. But uh, it, if this is too great, I think it's going to pull the belt too tight, and it will cause it to also slip or not move as we apply power underneath our motor that we'll build into our design. So I think over tightness and under tightness is going to be problematic for our design. Oh, that's a bad plan. Yeah, that would be a bad plan. So do we need to uh, do some trial and error and maybe build a conveyor belt that tests out under tension and over tension? And we also need to build a barrel belt gently. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's get busy making a design. All right, let's go over our design. Tension. 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 All right, so basically we're doing a very scaled down version where we have a tail pulley that's going to consist of a, a uh, metal rod and a few bottle caps. And then we have our head pulley that's going to consist of another metal rod and a couple bottle caps. What was your question, Ollie? Um, um, small ones versus big ones, and they're gonna fight. Yeah, there might be tension between both sides of the pulley, <coughs> but that's something else that uh, is considered. That I believe is considered bottom? in the design. Well, the well, let's let's finish going over this. In addition to our head pulley, we're gonna have these two pulleys in a rubber band going between that pulley and our motor. So that way we have drive to our head pulley. Now that drive will allow our belt to move across the entire mechanism. That motor can sting our head. Yeah. And then we'll have our two bend pulleys, which will be these two right here. And then our tension pulley, which will be consistent of this rod here. Yeah. And then we did an exploded view of every, of all the, the tail and head pulley down here. And then obviously, in order to, for our motor to operate, we're going to need a power source. And then we're also going to need something to become our chassis to house all these yeah. components. Um, Daddy, are we just building one? Daddy, yeah. Daddy, 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 um, this, uh, this uh, it looks like the same thing as our cars. Yeah, it's very similar components that we use for our cars. Now, hold on a second. Do y'all think we've made a good design here? Yeah. Then give everybody a thumbs up. All right, time to proceed.
All right, what's our magic word again? Tension. Tension, that's right. And so what we did is we built ourselves a motorized conveyor belt, right? And it broke because we have to do more stuff with it. Yeah, we had to figure out some more things. Uh, for starters, the motor was originally too low, which was creating too much tension from the rubber band between both pulleys. And the rubber band would pop off uh, when the motor was kind of can uh, canted, right? No. We also learned cool. that the spacing of our pulleys is equally important. Did we not? And then lastly, how, bit, how um, tight our belt is between the pulleys is equally important. Now, right now, there's a lot of deflection on this belt, right? So it's not super tight. So I bet because it's not tight or not creating enough tension that it's just going to slip and not operate. What do you think, uh, Ian? You think it's going to slip or you think it's going to turn? Mm, I don't know. What about you, Oliver? Uh, Is it going to slip or turn? I don't think so. You don't think it's going to turn? What about you, Audrey? Is it going to slip or turn? Turn. You think it's going to turn? All right, yeah. let's test this out. Say three, two, one, and I want you to take this lever and pull it down. So, three, two, one. Oh no! So, see, there's not enough tension right now on this belt to allow it to move between the pulleys, even though our motor is spinning, right? So, belt tension is important. Now, what would happen if we provided too much tension? Don't touch it. I'm going to use my thumb. To add more tension to this belt. And I bet if I over tension it, we'll jam up the motor. Look at that. That's another thing that we have to be concerned about with belt tension. Because over tensioning of a belt will wear out your pulleys. It could probably damage the motor and even seize it up. So tension is incredibly important, is it not? Now, why don't we try moving this back pulley a little bit further back. You see I've got some more holes back there to see if we can space it just enough to create tension on this belt but still allow operation. Let's try that next. All right. Okay, so we took our back pulley and we pulled it further back and put it into these back holes instead of front holes. And we can see that we have quite a bit less deflection in our belt now, so there's greater tension between here and there. But uh, you might notice that the motor is different, and we because had to swap it out. Why, why did, what was going on with the motor, Ian? Um, um, it did not work. Yeah, the, sh the shaft kept pulling out from the commutator, so the motor was getting easily jammed up. Uh, so we needed to swap out the motor. But we should be able to try it now to see if uh, see if there's enough tension to get this to work. All right, Ian, do you mind closing the contact on the battery pack so we can power this on? Right. Oh, yeah. Pack about? yeah, it looks like with this new motor, we need to set it further down again and put more tension on that belt up there. But it did work for a second. Let's uh, let's make these adjustments. There we go. We got us a conveyor belt. Oh! Oh! Good job, buddy. All right, put your thingy on it. Definitely carrying it forward. <laughs> hey, buddy, what was our magic word again? Tension. Our word of the day? Tension. Yeah. My body. We definitely learned quite a bit when it comes to building our own uh, motor driven conveyor belt. And if you took the cap. Uh, 
primarily tension between the motor and what is driving our uh, the pulley up this way is important. Uh, we use plastic bottle caps, right? Yeah. And, and if they're not balanced correctly, we or took one off. yeah, we had to take one off and trim it because it had a, a it was flared up on the end. That was causing the belt to move out, uh, jamming up our conveyor belt. So the sides of the sides of those pulleys matter. They need to be balanced. They they can't be canted on their on their shaft at all. Uh, we also learned that uh, tension between the back pulley and the and the front is important and we kind of demonstrated how we changed tension by looking at that deflection, right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, overall, are you pretty happy with this pulley that we made? And we've got it working fairly good now, so I think this is as good as what we're going to get given the uh, materials we are using. So I'm pretty happy as well. Can you give everybody a thumbs up? All right. Say see you later. Well, ladies and gents, if you enjoyed this uh, STEM project with the kids and uh, found this video at least entertaining, please consider subscribing to the channel, giving the video a thumbs up, uh, even sharing. Always never, uh, never mandatory and I'm not going to beg you for it, but it's always appreciated. Um, thank you for your time and hopefully uh, stick around for some more uh, STEM related content as well as electronics repairs and a few modification videos that I've got lined up in the future. Take care. Bye.